What up, YouTube? Big Lou, Big Louie's Coach Review back again with another review, and today we're here to do a little review on the V God Mechanical Tube Mod. Let me tell you something. I got hit up by a lot of people asking and requesting that I pick up this Mechanical Tube Mod just to give it a shot and see if it's really worth the money, okay? And this is actually a really cool review today because I'm really, really stoked that I got this device. Uh, one, it's a copper mod. Two, it has a gold-plated spring. But the spring on this is actually a little different. Different than your average-looking spring, which has a nice amount of resistance in the button as far as pushing it in. You know, I, I like a stiff throw on mechanical tube mods. Always have. I don't like spongy, mushy throws. I like a nice, sturdy spring, okay? And this mod, actually, it feels nice in the hand. It's not too tall. It's not too wide. It's not too this. It's not too that. You know, it's a nice all-day carry mechanical tube mod. Now, this is a copper mechanical tube mod, and I love copper for the conductivity of copper. The majority of my mechanical tube mods that are very conductive are copper, okay? I have beautiful looking brass looking ones. I love brass mechanical tube mods because when you shine them up, they look like gold, okay? Now, what makes this one really special to me is that it's copper for its conductivity. It's a hybrid, so it's a direct battery connect. The button is nice. It's got a beautiful throw and it's coated. So I'm not going to get a whole lot of patina on my hands. You know, I usually have like a permanent patina mark on my hands is what it is but i don't mind that mark and people who vape and they see that mark they know it's just patina rub off or run off or however you want to say it uh but this is nice because it's got this nice coating on it and i'm not sure if it's seracoated or if it's, it it feels like a truck bed liner that's what it feels like it's got a little roughness to it which is nice because it makes it easier to grab and hold when you're firing the button now this device is one of those devices that's considered a limited edition run. This is a limited edition mechanical tube mod. And what's nice about that is that when you get it, it's gonna be serialized, it's gonna be numbered, and there's probably like 10,000 of them. But the limited run meaning they're not gonna make them for a very long time. They're just gonna probably stop making them after a certain point, which kind of sucks, but it's kind of good at the same time. So if you're able to get your hands on one of these, I suggest you do. Now, my mechanical tube mod reviews, they're more like showcasing, okay? I'll showcase devices that I like. For those of you people out there that say, dude, does it hit hard? You don't have to ask me that question because the reason is, is I don't buy shit that doesn't hit hard. I don't own shit that doesn't hit hard. Every mod I have hits hard. But the difference is, is that, you know, some mods have certain things about them that I like and appreciate. Some of them are really safe. Some have uh, the, uh, the option to customize them, which I like. I like putting different sleeves, different buttons, different top caps, different this, different that. I like customization on a mechanical tube mod because it's a way of expressing myself uh, through the form of a mechanical tube mod. Now... You know, a lot of people out there who are using regulated devices that are looking to switch and get into mechanical tube mods is another point why I make these videos, okay? Now, every mechanical tube mod is pretty much the same thing. And you're only, you can only run off of so much voltage, basically. So, if you're using copper, yes, it's very conductive. What's the difference between one copper mod and another one? Personal preference. How it feels in the hand, how it fires for you, okay? Now... I'm going to be doing super sub ohm builds on like four different RDAs. I'm not going to do the builds because I already did the builds. I put them in the RDAs and I already have them ready. And I just want to explain the RDAs and which ones they are and why I like those RDAs set up with those type of builds. And, you know, just to see the conductivity. Is there a difference in conductivity? Yes, there is. There totally is in the RDA. If you have an all stainless steel RDA, it will not be as conductive as a gold-plated copper RDA or a gold-plated stainless. They all hit differently. They all work differently, RDAs, especially the airflow. One may have bottom airflow. One may have mega side airflow. One may have tight airflow. You know, all these RDAs are different today. Mechanical tube mods, on the other hand, if they're copper, they hit hard. If they're aluminum, they hit hard, but they're lightweight. 
but they have a tendency to get hot depending on the thickness also of the mechanical tube mod. If you have a really thick aluminum mechanical tube mod, it probably won't heat up as quick or as much as a lighter weight aluminum mod. But this being the V-God Copper, I, I really like it a lot. I love the looks, you know, the whole V-God thing. All right, I know I'm wearing a V-God hat. I like wearing this hat. It's a white hat. I'm not sponsored by V-God, although that would be pretty cool. But I'm not sponsored by V-God. You know, they sent me this device. I didn't purchase it. I couldn't find it for purchase anywhere. People hit me up like crazy. Dude, review the V-God. Review the V-God. And I wanted to review the V-God, but I couldn't fucking find it to purchase it anywhere. It was sold out everywhere. So they were nice enough to send me this. And I was just like, dude, are you kidding me? That's sick. You know? So I was super, super stoked on this because, you know, I got it for free, which is nice. And... Although it's free, does it make it a good device? Well, I love it so far, you know. I mean, I don't give a shit if it's free. If I paid for it, I'd only pay for it if it's a good mod. You know what I mean? And if I review it, obviously it's got to be a good mod. The only time I'll shit on a mechanical tube mod is when it's really poorly made. And I'll just buy it just to show the world, yo, avoid this because this thing sucks. You know, and that's that's when that happens. But for the most part... This is more like a showcase. It's almost like a TV commercial. But it's what I like. You know what I mean? And it's, and we're going to do this based on performance. Now, currently, on this mechanical tube mod, I've got a Apocalypse 20 millimeter RDA, which fits my Avid Life caps, my Avid Life and my Comp Life caps, all those caps, basically, that fit all those uh, Avid Life devices, whether you have a torpedo deck or you have a battle deck or you have uh, whatever, a, a, a tugboat RDA. If you have a tugboat RDA, like version 1 or version 2, and these Avid Life caps, they fit on it, then by all means, go out and get that RDA. This is a really nice conductive RDA. I really have to say, this is a silver-plated RDA, and it has gold um, clamps on it, which is really nice. Gold-plated clamps. Now... Why do I like it so much? Well, first off, let me juice up, okay? And the juice company I'm about to juice up with, you're going to be like, what the fuck? Look at that fucking bottle. It's a company called a thousand mil dot M L uh, dot M E. So it's 1000 M L dot M E. That's their web address. 1000 mils. This is a $75 bottle. This is equivalent to 16 60 milliliter bottles. 16. Yum, 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 yum. This is unicorn milk, and it's fucking good. It's like a strawberry ice cream. It's called Mother of Mother of the Unicorn Milk. This is a .07 build, okay? flavor is incredible this juice is fucking good right here this is some good fucking juice uh, you know obviously no one's gonna walk around carrying a thousand mils maybe me but i don't expect anybody else to walk around with a thousand milliliters of e-liquid this fucking company they'll they'll send you a thousand mils whatever flavor you want they got a fucking sample pack and i got a juice review coming up on them but they got a cannoli flavor they got all these other good flavors really good fucking flavors and you know like when you get a thousand like let's say you see a company and they're offering 500 mils of juice and you never tried the juice before like i don't know i never tried the juice before am i gonna get 500 mils of a shitty product this shit is good it's like really good really good juice I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a review this week, hopefully. Uh, this week, I'm going to be over at ECC in California, December 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So I'm going to be in Cali for those days at um, at the ECC happening over at the Raceway over in uh, Santa Anita, California. Uh, I think it's east of L.A. It's like a little north, but east of L.A., uh, east of Pasadena. Um, you know, it's in that area, that Los Angeles area center to uh cali over there so I'm, I'm looking forward to that event that's going to be a great event to go to but um yeah i'm, I'm going to bust out the review on that juice soon and it's going to be a good review and there's also a giveaway involved with that so be tuned to watch that video okay now i want to take another vape
you guys, I mean, on camera, you don't see the clouds being as big. Let me tell you, they're fucking huge. I mean, they're just ridiculous. With a .07, mind you. This is a stainless steel build that I did. It's the it's the video I did recently on doing a Fuse Clapton. So it's a 24-gauge stainless steel fuse, two-wire fuse, wrapped in 34-gauge stainless steel. Together on a four-wrap, it comes out to roughly almost like a 16-gauge wire build wrapped four times. It's almost at that same capacity, basically. So this is on dual coil, and we're rocking it at 0.07 ohms. Or actually, this one says 0 0.06. Sorry, 0 0.06 ohms. I'm not telling you to go out and build a 0 0.06 build, but this is just my way of finding out whether or not I can get a hot button on this device. And speaking of buttons on this device, they used, just like on their 150, they got the, the V-God 150 mechanical, uh, uh, I'm sorry, regulated device, and I really, really like it. The only drawback about it is the battery door, there's a little space on the lid, and the fact that you can't use it in stainless steel temp control mode, okay? But other than that, is it a good 150 device? Yes, it's small, compact, and it has a carbon fiber, which this has it also, on the button. Not a carbon fiber sticker, like legitimate carbon fiber, like you feel it. They have it on this button. You can see it right there. They have a carbon fiber uh, button. I don't know if it's... I'm, I'm guessing it's, you know, obviously it's not conductive, the carbon fiber. They just put carbon fiber on the button, which I think is fucking awesome. Feels really nice on the finger when you're pushing in the button. I mean, the throw, it's not spongy. It's not too hard, not too soft. It's a nice in-between medium firmness, which is nice. Um, like I said, hybrid connect, you know, it's, it's copper. Really really nicely machined really nicely machined okay now the one thing i can say about this device is that they even went an extra step and they stepped into the world of safety as well as being very conductive we know it fires a 0 0.06 no problems the mod is just a tiny bit warm doesn't get hot i don't get hot button you know this is why i put these low builds on here to see if i get a hot button okay and to see how well the tube itself can, you know, deal with the heat, okay? Because the batteries do get hot. That's why I say, you know, 0 0.06, not the smartest way to go because you're pushing the limits of batteries. But, you know, 0 0.06 is a good way to test these mechanical tube mods, see if they're going to hold up. Now, what happens here is on the mechanical tube mod, they took the steps for safety seriously, okay? And I like that. I like seeing that. Not only do they have venting for battery venting, but they also have venting for battery runoff. Meaning, when a battery vents, it usually vents in the top area of the positive area. So you get that little platform of your battery with like three little legs on it, and then you see the space between the top positive contact and the battery itself. In there, there's a seal that if a battery were to vent, it will vent from there and it'll shoot out all liquid and so forth. And, you know, that's bad. But then there's battery runoff, where a battery just gets so hot to the point where if it malfunctions, it's not going to sit there and spew out liquid. It's going to explode. Now, if it were to explode and you don't want to lose your mechanical tube mod, they have venting for the battery runoff as well as battery venting. Okay, so you know the difference between the two, battery runoff and battery venting, okay? So if it were to run off and explode, because when that happens, basically you're pushing the limits of a shitty battery or a rewrap battery that you don't know what it is. It, maybe it's not a high amp drain battery. Maybe it's not this, maybe it's not that. Maybe you're chain vaping the fuck out of a sub ohm, which you, a super sub ohm, which you should not do. I don't chain vape super sub ohms. I take a hit like every five minutes. You know, I don't sit there chain vaping away. I don't do that, okay? Now, they, they had put five vent holes on the mechanical tube mod that run from top to bottom, okay? So you're not only just covering a battery venting, whether on the top or on the bottom, but you're also preventing the runoff from the mechanical tube mod from being a pipe bomb so it doesn't explode. You understand what I'm saying? Because when you have a compressed explosion, it can cause more havoc, okay? And they extend the safety features 
a bit more. And they take it to another level by including a Delrin center. The inside of the center of this mechanical tube mod is coated with Delrin, which is a really nice touch. Very nice touch, okay? Very, very nice touch. Deep down inside the mod, it looks nice. You have your copper 510 connect. You can see it up there. It's nice and clean copper up there. And the threads are really, really nice on this device. We're going to go up close. We're going to check it out on the up close and everything. We're going to look at the button, the spring, the everything. We're going to look at it all. But I just wanted to talk about why this is such a good device, you know. And I'm really, really happy I got this device. There's a lot of copper tube mods out there. And it doesn't say this is better than that one. It's just preferences on safety, looks, customization, and so forth, you know. And next up, I'm going to screw on my um, Armageddon RDA, which is the Apocalypse. Okay, that one was the 20 mil uh, Apocalypse. But this is the 24 milliliter Apocalypse, which is all gold plated. And it's got the sandwich posts on it, which also vapes very nicely as well. I'm using the same juice on all these RDAs. I've just been switching off uh, on juice, on RDAs and from from mod to mod, basically. But I'm using the same fucking juice on all of these. And god damn, this juice is good. So, yeah, look at that. Vapes nicely. This one, it's not a .06, okay? This creates nice, dense clouds. They're very warm, but they're very dense. Okay, for the type of build that I have on here, this is a 24 gauge nichrome fused with a 38 gauge stainless steel. Okay, so it's a different build. And this one's ohming out at 0 0.10 ohms. So this is a little bit higher, which I'm not really pushing the limits of my battery. But it's for a different style of vaping. At 0 0.10, I get a more deeper and more flavorful vape with this vape. And it, since it's a, it's a high resistant, since it, the, it's a high resistant and the RDA is gold plated, it's very conductive. Okay. And this is of the new series of Armageddon Splatter. Uh, this one's like black and purple and gold. So it's got like this splatter design to it. So I, I, I like I like the look of it. It's a cool look. You know, especially if you're not looking to murder out your mechanical mod all the way, you want a little splash of color. This is a nice little setup. Flavor is just incredible. Cooks the juice perfectly at 0.10. And then we got our 528 Customs Goon. I like this one because this is my. Uh, black slash stainless steel look i got the chubby cap from district 5 on there on here i'm rocking a parallel 24 gauge two wire parallel wrapped five times around the three millimeter bit vapes nicely it's hot it's got a different style vape all these builds have different little little different nuances about the builds you know each build has some different type of flavor some different type of heat some different type of cloud producing you know This one's more responsive. When I hit the button, it doesn't need that much time to ramp up. The wire that I'm using on this one is a company by the name of Third Rail Wire. Okay, uh, I'm going to put their Instagram somewhere over here. It's going to be at the Third Rail underscore wire. Okay, this company's out of New York. They make great wire. Hit them up on Instagram. Trust me, you'll really dig that wire. Super responsive. As soon as you hit that button, it just starts vaping. Really good wire company. Really nice RDA. I mean, you know, the Goon, it is what it is, the Goon. I like the airflow in the Goon. Always love the airflow in the Goon. Wide open. I don't even need the AFC on it. I just like it wide open, okay? Uh, really, really good RDA. Uh, another RDA that I recently reviewed that I'm not a huge fan of, but I like the way it looks on this mechanical tube mod because the coating kind of matches is the Aria Terminus. This is the Aria Build Terminus RDA, okay? This has got another hot build on here as well. But this takes, this is this one is something I would use on a regulated device. I wouldn't normally use it on a mechanical tube mod. Matter of fact, the build on here 
was last for my regulated device that I was vaping at 150 watts on it. So this one, you know, for a mechanical tube mod, it's got a little slow start, but once it starts cooking, it gradually gets hotter. But like I said, I like the looks of the terminus on the V-God because it's just murdered out, and that looks pretty fucking cool. You know, once again, the drip tip kind of sucks on the terminus, but what can you do? It is what it is. Vape's nice. You know, once again, it's not that bad. Terminus has another drip tip. Let me just pull it out real quick. And it's a little shorter profiled. But, yeah, I mean, it's super mega fucking hot to drip tip this extra one. Okay. Yeah, so we have this one, which is a taller profile, and this one is a smaller profile. So I'm just going to throw this on here real quick. You know, and there we go. Smaller profile, very stubby, okay? Whoa, that's hot. <laughs> that's, that was a hot build. Only because the shorter profile brings you closer to the coils, you know what I mean? So that's, that's fucking hot. Now, um, I don't have any other caps that would fit the hole of the terminus. You can see it's just a gigantic fucking hole. I might have... Uh, a chuff cap? No. no. This is an old chuff cap that I have. Uh, no, no. You know, I might be able to squeeze a different kind of chuff cap in there. Uh, an old Delrin chuff cap, but no. Not going to go there. You know, I, I love the chuff cap, the original chuff caps. You know, chuff is a great guy. I love his, his caps and everything, but they're a bit old school. You know what I mean? And I don't really have many of them laying around. In fact, I don't even know where the fuck they could be, really. Uh, there's a bag of drip tips here. Yeah, I don't know. Let me just see one thing. Let me see one thing. I got an iJoy uh, drip tip here. Let's see if this is pretty big. Let's see if it fits. No. <laughs> it's actually bigger. This one's like a 26 millimeter cap. Yeah, so that doesn't work. All right, not a big deal, though. All right, so moving forward, let's go on to the next RDA. The next RDA that I like to use as well, that I normally use on regulated devices, is my Reload. Okay, now the Reload, it's not a, it's not a device that I normally use. It's not an RDA that I normally use on a regulated, but the build I have in here is for a regulated device, which requires, you know, um, a build. It requires the power of let's say 4.2 volts actual 4.2 volts with a mechanical tube mod there's voltage drop so you're not really firing at 4.2 volts you're actually firing at like 3.4 3.2 a lot of people get misguided in their ways saying dude 0.06 oh my god if i do the math on steam engine at uh, three uh, at a 0.06 at 4.2 volts i'm not firing at 4.2 volts there's a lot of fucking voltage drop in there. I'm consistently firing roughly at 3.2 volts or 3.4 volts with a 0.06 ohm build. Do the math from there, and then you'll see what amps I'm at and so forth, okay? But a lot of people get, you know, they, they think they're like fucking electricians, and they're like, dude, you're at 4.2 volts with a 0.06. Yeah, that's like fucking 800 amps or whatever the hell it is. I don't know. But it's still a high amperage, way beyond the limits of the fucking battery. But I'm not firing at 4.2. You know, the battery fully charged is at 4.2, but with voltage drop, I'm at fucking 3.2, maybe even 3.0. You know, I'm at a very low voltage at that point because it's requiring so much voltage to ramp it up. So, yeah, this one's like you hit the button and it just takes a little time because of the build I have in it. It takes like a second or two for it to start going. But it's only because the build that I have in here is a gigantic fucking build. It's a gigantic fucking fuse Clapton in here. So, grab my unicorn milk. And drip away, drip away, drip away, drip away. Okay. Okay, so you see, once, the longer you hold it, you're going to start seeing it ramping up and going. You know, just solely based on the fact that on the longer you hold it, then it'll start working more and more, basically. But if I hit it, chucks and it vapes really, really well. You know what I mean? 
So no matter what RDA and whatever RDA build you put on there, it's, it's this device is going to be able to handle it. Still, my mechanical tube mod is not hot. Okay, it's not hot by any means. Okay, and that one we're just going to see what it ohmed out at real quick because I know it's a higher resistance. This one. Okay, we're at 0.08 ohms, not 0.06, not 0.04. We're at 0.08, but this one requires more voltage to get it ramped. You understand what I'm saying? Even though it's a 0.08, doesn't mean it's going to instantly fire. Because of the thickness and the different types of wire that are in the build and so forth, uh, I believe the wire core on these are Cantol. So it has Cantol core, but wrapped in Twisted Messes Nichrome 80. So the Nichrome 80 is what ramps up quick, but the Cantol takes a little bit longer to ramp up versus a lower resistant 24 gauge stainless steel wire, which ramps up like that. You know what I mean? So there's differences in the wire that do different types of things to the mech mods and how they work, okay? So let's go up close, let's check this out. It's been 26 minutes of me talking about this. Let's dive up close, let's check out this device. So we got our VGOD box right here, which normally they what they do is they actually give you big fucking packaging. So this one has got a pretty huge box displaying the device and uh, over here it's got a ghosted image of what entails inside the box and so forth uh, a little difficult to read i mean in all honesty if you were looking at this in a store it's a little hard to read the lettering back here it's a little too ghosted uh if anything as a important thing to say to v god is just make this brighter or wider so you can actually see it but the actual information is ghosted i guess the whole reason why they have it ghosted is so you could focus more on the image of the mechanical mod and just see v god pro mech popping out more okay uh but even me in this well-lit room i have a little bit difficult of a time reading this uh, i don't have the greatest eyes in the world so i can't really see that 100 percent so to open this up basically you got this little prong right here that you have to pull open so you have this little prong right here, then open the door and yank out your box basically, right? So there's our box. And this, once again, they give you one of these cool little cases, which you have to distinguish the top from the bottom. Obviously, the fatter side right here would go on the bottom. The skinnier side would go on the top. Uh, you just unzip it basically. So, you know, take your zipper unzip it behind the netting i've got two v god stickers one in white one in black one they both say trick life on them that's pretty cool and then also they include an extra gold spring which i'm going to show you guys this in a minute so you remove your little foam pad thing little protector and it reveals your mod once we take away this inner foaming there's nothing else here basically and there's nothing underneath so you can get rid of the foam and then you could use this case as a mechanical tube mod holder if you want. So you could put other devices in here. You could put mechanical tube mods, wire, snips, whatever you need. You can put your coil building accessories here. And you could put a bunch of mechanical tube mods here or batteries or whatever you need. It's a handy dandy little travel case. I've already got two of them and I love these cases. The only thing I could say is that the zipper is a little cheap on here. So the zipper might actually end up uh, ripping on you in the future or something. But for now, it's a nice handy dandy little case to carry around with. So the mod comes in this little plastic cover, which you can take, remove, get rid of. And then here we are, the mod up close. You can see it has very nice clean engraving as far as the uh, V-God logo goes. Um, on the bottom, you can see we have our carbon fiber button, basically. And up top, we do have a 510 connection featuring an American flag saying official V-God USA Pro Mech. Okay, that's what's written up top. Uh, very nice clean threads and a 510 connection itself. And if we were to open this up, the threads on here are not many threads, which is nice. There's only a small amount of threads, which I like. Now looking at the button, you can see that there's only three male threads on there. Three male threads, which I like because mainly because of the fact that you don't have to sit there and screw and unscrew and unscrew to get your contact, uh, to get your button into place, basically. One of the key features that I really like about this switch design is that this Delrin piece is a self-adjusting Delrin 
for the battery height adjustment in your mechanical tube mod, which I like very much. Uh, basically, it, I believe it's spring loaded, okay? So under the Delrin itself, there's probably a spring that will adjust the battery height to meet with your RDA contact, basically, so you can avoid battery rattle. And you don't have to sit there and play with your battery height adjustment Delrin uh, uh, by yourself. It'll just basically do it all on its own, which is a really nice feature. The copper contact on this mechanical tube mod is a big, beefy copper magnet. Very, very wide. Uh, you can see mine has got little tiny arc marks here and there from the batteries that I use. Uh, I could probably update my battery and put a new battery in there to, so, to avoid all these arc marks. But it is very conductive and it has been functioning really, really well for me. This is the underside of the cap of the contact itself, basically. So it is a female contact, basically. You can see it's copper, and it is threaded in there, basically. They also include some sort of uh, some sort of silicone lubricant in there. It has a little bit of a stench to it, but it's it's really not that bad. Now the male portion of the switch, you can see right here, they've engraved some sort of logo on there. I don't know what the hell that logo means, but it's there on one side. There's a logo. On the other side of my mail switch, you'll notice that they put a serial number engraved in there. That's actually laser etched onto the inner portion of the switch. On the outer portion of the switch, you'll notice the carbon fiber that lays within the switch button itself. Really nice. You can see it, it does have uh, a nice surface to it where you'll be able to feel it when pushing in the button, basically. This is our flat wired spring, which is gold plated, which has a nice amount of resistance in the spring itself. Very nice resistance. And you can see the style. It's like a two wire flat spring that's uh, soldered, I believe, or spot welded in certain areas. And it gives it a good amount of resistance, basically. Now, looking down into the top of our switch, you can see where the contact would be. And they included a little ledge in there, so when you put your copper contact in there, it will not go down into the switch area. It'll basically stop and rest at that ledge. Once your contact is sitting in there, it'll go in there and it'll rest on that ledge. It won't go any further inside. And the female portion of our switch, you can see that the contact is sitting on the ledge. And the uh, coating goes about halfway down into the inside of the switch, which is a nice little touch. I have tried to put magnets in here, but it, it's really pointless to put magnets in here. Your best bet is just using the gold-plated spring that this comes with. It fits in there perfectly, and it's got just the right amount of throw and tension on the throw. Lastly, I wanted to show the inner tube itself. You can see there was a black Delrin on the inner tube itself, and the threads are machined quite well on here. You can see the coating on the actual mechanical tube mod itself. It is a little porous, so it gives you a little grip, basically. See our vent holes go all the way through, basically. Five vent holes. One at the top, one at the bottom. Two in the center in case you have battery... Uh, three in the center in case you have battery runoff. I gotta say, it's a hard-hitting mechanical tube mod. It's really nice, really nice engraved, uh, really nice throw on the button. Like I said, once again, nice, firm, medium firmness throw on the button. The carbon fiber gives a nice little feeling to your fingertip. The coating on the mechanical tube mod itself, it's a little abrasive, but not like rough. It just has a little slight abrasion on it to where you can hold your mechanical tube mod and it won't slide in your hand which is nice. You could get a nice firm grip, hit the button, and let it rip. And that's it. I mean, there's not much more to it. If you guys are interested and you've been thinking about this, I guarantee you 100% you won't be disappointed. With this mechanical tube mod, you will not be disappointed. It is a nice mechanical tube mod. I do understand it's under a limited run or they're doing limited runs on it. I don't know the longevity, how long they're going to be making it. If you can, I suggest you pick it up as soon as you can because this is a really nice mechanical tube mod. I don't have any coupon codes. I don't have any discounts or anything like that. But rest assured, you have my seal of approval. This is a really nice mechanical tube mod. I highly suggest you pick this up. Definitely well worth it. Uh, I can't say anything more about it because it's just really nice mechanical tube mod.
That's about it. Uh, hits hard, handles the builds that I put on it. So if it can handle my builds, it'll definitely handle your builds without a doubt. Uh, and that's about it. So for me to YouTube, peace out. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully this video was helpful. You know, I try to touch all the bases for all the people out there to get a better understanding on how this device is, how it looks, how it works, how it performs. So for me to YouTube, peace out. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm out of here. Laters.